Gerald Lucas here with another installment of Ask Gerald, where you get your real estate questions answered. Today we've got a provocative question from Andrew, who writes from Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, which is where I went to graduate school, incidentally. Um, and Andrew writes, Gerald, I was watching one of those financial programs on TV the other day, and one of the guests was saying that stocks have been proven to be a much better investment over time than real estate based on historical returns. Well, that's a great question, Andrew, and I, like you, have heard other people say that before as well. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these kinds of studies and statistics on average stock market versus real estate returns are very misleading. So for starters, they often use averages, right? And your life is not based on a set of averages. It's based on a set of specific things that that you choose to do or that happen to you that you have to then deal with. So you should always be wary of people using averages. And so the real answer then is which provides a, big, a better return? The devil's in the details, right? So it depends on which property you buy and which stocks you buy. But I've read many very misleading studies of this sort that don't take into account the many advantages that you get in real estate that you don't get with other investments. So firstly, these kinds of studies normally assume that you're paying cash for real estate. So look at the return on real estate versus stocks, assuming that you're paying cash for real estate and cash for stocks. Well, for the most part, particularly for rental uh, property, you're not paying cash, right? So you can borrow most if not all of the purchase price for real estate without having to worry about a margin call, right? So even myself as a full-time real estate investor with no W-2 income, I can still borrow 60 to 75% of the purchase price of a property from a traditional lender. And I could borrow even more than that potentially from a private investor. And leverage amplifies return. So a lot of those studies don't take that into account. Secondly, because real estate is such an illiquid asset, we can usually get much better deals. So savvy real estate investors rarely pay anywhere near average market price for the property that they buy. And it's much more difficult to buy, find and buy severely undervalued stocks. The third kind of misleading uh, thing about these kind of studies is that um, they often don't take into account the income that you generate from real estate, particularly rental property, right? Now there is, there are dividend stocks, but normally they're not going to generate the kind of income that you can generate from rental property. Um, and lastly, I can, I'm, can almost guarantee you that the commentator or the guest on the financial show that you're watching conveniently failed to mention the different tax benefits that you get from real estate. So we can start with deductions, right? Deductions like deductions for mortgage interest or for mortgage insurance or for selling costs or for property taxes or for real estate mortgage debt forgiveness, right? You get to write all these things off and you don't get those kinds of tax advantages with other assets. Also, um, a savvy real estate investor can use IRS section code 121 and 1031 to defer taxes on gains indefinitely. And you can't really do that with most other assets. So when you add up all those benefits, the benefits of owning real estate are a hell of a lot better than many of those studies will suggest. So what you're really seeing a lot of when you see those studies is a lot of Wall Street propaganda. So thanks for your question, Andrew. Good luck. For more real estate tips and for information on my real estate coaching program, visit performanceproperty.com. I'm Gerald Lucas, and I'll see you again soon.